Last week, we explored the uninhabited coasts of East and South Greenland. This week, we are sailing along the coast of West Greenland, visiting a remote Viking settlement where Greenland was actually named, and then the world's smallest capital. Stay tuned because you're not going to want to miss this. We're off today to explore our first Greenlandic settlement, the village of Kassiarsik. It just looks so cute and colorful from the boat. The village of Kassiarsuk has a unique and important history for Greenland. It was once the home of Eric the Red, a Norse explorer who was exiled from Iceland for manslaughter and arrived here around 982 CE. When his exile was over, he returned to Iceland to attract settlers by telling them they could live in a place called Greenland instead of Iceland. The Viking colony was called Rattahlis. The structures, including a longhouse and the church, have been restored by UNESCO and are one of the premier tourist destinations in the country. This valley is some of the most fertile land in the country and became the site of Greenland's first sheep farm in 1924. We got to visit the sheep farm and were invited into their home for traditional cakes and hand-picked herbal tea. They just told everyone that we get a third heli flight. We were only supposed to get one 12 to 15 minute helicopter flight included with our voyage. We've already had two and we get one more and it's going to be a landing. <laughs> This is so amazing. I really can't even believe we're here right now. Eighty percent of Greenland is buried under an ice sheet made of compressed snow that has fallen over the last 100,000 years. The Greenland ice sheet is 1,400 miles long and 700 miles across its widest point with an average depth of 5,000 feet. The thickest point is 10,000 feet of ice. This is ridiculous. It's fine. We are in Nook. Nuuk is the smallest capital in the world. It is the capital of Greenland. And today we have an entire day to go explore the city. I've actually signed up for an excursion with our ship geologist to go see an exposure of the oldest rocks in the world. Nuuk, baby. It's the coldest day that we've had yet on this trip. It is three degrees Celsius or about 31 degrees Fahrenheit with a wind chill. So, since we're going to be out of the zodiacs this morning, it's time to really bundle up and finally make use of all those layers that I brought. Let's go see some rocks. And sadly, with the vessel alongside, we're not able to maneuver to provide any kind of shelter for our loading and unloading process. So regrettably, we must uh, cancel this morning's geology excursion and release those brave souls who had signed up for a day in Nuuk. Oh man, I don't get to see the old rocks. I'll find an old rock for you, babe. Our little yellow penguins are disembarking, going to see Nuuk. All right, there's actually a lot you should know about this tiny city. To really understand the culture here, we have to go back at least 4,500 years to a time when humans were migrating all across the Arctic regions of the world on land bridges and sea ice. Some of those cultures made it to the western coast of Greenland. A few thousand years after that, a familiar face, our favorite murderous Viking, Eric the Red, and his Norse settlers, who mysteriously disappeared after only a couple hundred years in Greenland. Nowadays, the country of Greenland is a province of Denmark. Our guide explains that 
Traditionally, the Greenlandic people are nomadic, shifting with the seasons ruled by the weather. But in the 1950s, their European government built factories and apartment buildings in order to exploit the people to facilitate economic growth for Denmark. In 1979, however, Greenland was granted home rule, which returned them to some power over their own identity, though Denmark still has the final say on foreign relations, defense, currency, and the legal system. Of Greenland's 60,000 inhabitants, 20,000 of them live in the city of Nuuk. It is Greenland's most populous city, world's smallest capital, world's northernmost capital, and thanks to the people's revival and celebration of Greenlandic culture, it has been called the most indigenous city in the world. The University of Greenland lives here, the Library of Greenland, and a beautiful cultural center. We toured shops selling local wares such as kivet from muskox, clothing made from seal skin, beaded necklaces, Greenlandic silver and rubies, and more. What do you think, babe? The expansive and well done Nuuk Museum tells the story of a people thriving in the harsh Greenlandic climate for thousands of years, using kayaks to fish and hunt for seals and whale, even polar bears. And the fun, colorful, artistic nature of the people here echoes throughout generations. A highlight of the museum are the Kilikitsok mummies. They were discovered in a cave by hunters in 1972. These people died about 500 years ago and were preserved by weather conditions, not intentional mummification. First thought to be a doll, the most haunting mummy is a six-month-old boy, likely suffocated or buried alive with his mother's body. This was a common practice with children under two in order to spare them a slow death by starvation.